Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures. Today we're going to take a look back at Necromunda with the Corpse Grinder Cult. It's been a while since I've gotten to build any GW models and put them on this channel, so this is a nice change. I really have been digging their new Forge World Master of the Eightfold Way or whatever he's called, but I figured I'm going to get these guys to tide me over and they cost the exact same amount as ordering the Forge World dude. So, yeah, I didn't go in on Dark Uprising. It was just too rich for my poor tastes. But we got the next best thing, and hopefully I can talk my brother Barzam into eventually getting those Eliminators or whatever the police are called built up and some Subjugators, and we'll go from there. So, lots and lots of chainsaws. Oh, yeah. Bases of various sizes that I hope are all there. Five. And five, good, okay. We got them all. Did I look at the sprue already? Some of these dudes are pretty big. Not that they're in focus or anything. Some of them are kind of tiny. I'm guessing that's one of the initiate bodies right here. So my guess is... Not that I have bothered to read up on anything that's in Dark Rising, Up Rising, but it seems to me like these initiates are basically like what the Jews used to be. Jews. Okay, well, this is an interesting setup. So it looks like we've got everything that can be built out of the body on this page. Now this is what's really nice, is finally they tell us you could use these parts, and everything here is compatible. Everything here is compatible. And these are not. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys have built enough of the Necromunda stuff, but I know I had a hard time figuring out which parts I actually wanted to fit on which bodies. Especially if you bought stuff secondhand, or if you wanted to try cobbling something new together. You know, some of the parts fit better than others. So, I am going to get these guys built. It looks to me like the Initiates get the little baby bases. And then the Skinners and Leaders get the big honkin' bases. That sounds about right. Okay, so there's four Initiates and six big dudes. Alright, I'm going to build them as is, I think. So, just to keep things simple. And honestly, I like a lot of the poses that they got going on here. So, give me a sec, we'll get them built, and we'll take a look at them. All right, so we got the new recruit type dudes for our corpse grinders here. I was unimpressed with them, and it was mostly because straight out of the box, you don't have a whole lot of options. And yeah, I did build these pretty vanilla. Obviously, you can have a guy with a gun in both hands, or you can have a guy with both the sword and the axe blade in both hands and go in dual close combat weapons. The choice is obviously yours. There were a fair number of head choices. It's just with the limited body options, and admittedly, if you've got anything even remotely close to a Necromunda collection of assorted gang members or bits, I don't think you'd have a whole lot of trouble grabbing stuff from, like, say, Orlock gang members or Dilac or Delacroix. I don't know how the hell you pronounce it, but that's beside the point. Anyway, what I wanted to say was, I think with the male gangers out there, you totally could get some of these parts. Just a quick cut off at the hand, at the wrist, and I think you could implement some nice weapon swaps there. However, I haven't actually gotten a hold of the Book of Ruin yet, so I don't know if that's even a legit option. So keep that in mind. But I do think at least conversion wise it really wouldn't be too much of a hassle you know just even giving them a gloved hand i think yeah they're all basically I mean, he's got a gauntlet it looks like so i don't think that's too bad these guys were just kind of boring because to me the real star of the show were the big honking cleaver demon headed dudes so same complaint that I have for the smaller guys whose names are escaping me at the moment is that you don't have a whole lot of options available. You have either big grindy blade A or chain axe B. It's like that's it. So basically every weapon choice is the same for these guys. It's just their poses. That's the main variation. I take that back. We've got the guy who has what looks to be a rock cutter that he hurls out like a flying guillotine 
of a 70s kung fu movie, which in and of itself is a pretty awesome weapon and needs to be in more tabletop representation, but anyway. So I, I still don't know what's up with his head. I'm, I'm assuming he's actually supposed to be wearing like a hood or a mask because there is that little tiny bit visible in there. That's the only thing I can think of. I really don't know what's going on with him. I'm going to paint it up like a hood, though. So, you do have a little bit of variation. There are a couple more head choices. That is always appreciated. The champion dude is just looking boss with his very ornate demon-looking helmet. I'm, a, I'm hoping and assuming it's a helmet. I don't even know. But his friends are equally wonderful with their extra layers of horns and spikes. Or totems. I think these are the chaos icons. I don't remember. I could be wrong. Obviously, it doesn't look like a chaos symbol, but it might have been an icon for the corpse grinders. I don't remember. I know it was designated something in the instructions. So, again, much like their smaller brethren, I'm just worried about their lack of options. It was kind of fun to build them. They look really cool, but in terms of viability in the game, I have absolutely no idea. They're obviously going to get gunned down fighting just about anybody else. Hopefully they can shrug it off, but you know, I think that's time for me to get the actual rules and take a better look at them. If you guys have any information on what they can take to the table, then by all means, please let me know. I'm quite curious. Um, I wouldn't mind grabbing a couple sprues of extra dudes I saw at the local store because I think for conversion possibilities, they could be pretty fun. They obviously, the big dudes here, are going to look quite imposing when they're not bothering to be hunched over or leaping forward compared to other typical human-sized Necromunda models. Sadly, they don't fare as well against Goliaths. They're a little bit smaller. I don't know what they've been eating down there in the underhive. Um, but I did manage to paint one of them. I did show them off earlier. And he's got this crazy, weird, scarab beetle thing going on there. And the only way you're going to be able to get his face painted, obviously, is to paint that before you attach the armor. So that's what I did. But it was a nice, simple paint job. And it comes out pretty nice looking. I went with a bronze uh, base color on the armor before I went over it with a red contrast. I want to say it was the Bloodthirsters or Blood Angel Red. I don't remember which one. It was a little bit brighter. But yeah, so a cool kit, fun for me. I mean, I love crazy dudes with close combat weapons running around in absolutely ornate armor. <clears throat> However, I don't know if they're going to be to everybody else's liking as much as mine. Hopefully they have enough weapons, or at least Forge World could be on the way soon with all kinds of fancy bits. And that makes me wonder if they're going to do any kind of head swaps and what we'd have in store for them as well. I think these guys would make awesome bad guys in just about any tabletop game. You know, obviously, Necromunda is where they belong. But, you know, what's not to like with evil-looking dudes running around with big chainsaw-bladed axes? So, I'm sure we'll get some use out of them in something. With that said, this is High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching, and we'll see you back here soon. Bye-bye.